Your Excellency, thank you very much for the kind invitation to be here to celebrate six years of Future Assured, how time flies. I remember the launch of Future Assured and of course the many programs, uh, including Get Involved, uh, where we had to get involved and all of us had to carry our placards and take uh, photographs on our chests. Even Mr. President was forced uh, to take his own photograph with a placard. But more importantly, the happy faces of women and children, flood victims in Kogi, in Kebi, in Niger states, who received food and other relief materials from the Get Involved initiative. The educational initiatives, especially the Youth Education Empowerment Program, YIP, where a number of young people were given and plans also in place to give them tutorials in WAEC, NECO, NAPTEP, and JAM. And of course, the support for girl-child education, support to IDPs uh, that return to their communities with relief materials, including foodstuff, uh, clothing, beddings, building materials, building of schools and orphanages in Maiduguri, especially, distribution of future assured packs here in Abuja, in Abuja hospitals, free health screening in Kogi, uh, especially in conjunction with the Kogi Women and Youth Advancement Foundation. I can see that uh, Governor Yayabelu is clapping more than everybody else today. <laughs> <laughs> in, in Nasarawa for men and women, free health screening for men and women in Nasarawa State, in Oyo State, in Ogun State. In Lagos, it was the commissioning of mobile clinics for medical outreaches, and then women empowerment and training also. Then the distribution of maternity kits also in Lagos. Collaboration with the celebrities, and I remember that particular occasion when Abuja was flooded with celebrities who worked with industry captains to support malnourished children uh, and of course uh, with the wives of diplomats and the Clean Water Initiative also aimed to provide clean water for communities with no access to water and also to achieve the SDG goals as set by the UN, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It has certainly been an exciting six years. Your Excellency, I'm sure that of all the children that the Buhari, Aisha Buhari Foundation has given birth to, uh, Future Assured must be the favorite child. And this is as it should be. Uh, the very future, <laughs> th this is as it should be. The very future of Nigeria and the very future of our communities depends on how well we address the many concerns of women and children in our communities, especially the three focal areas that uh, Future Assured has identified, health, education, and empowerment, and economic empowerment. And we agree with Future Assured's belief that all social indices can be influenced if the health, education, and economic status of the population are improved upon. And that is the case, clearly. Women constitute half our population, and the youth are at least 60% of our population. And women, especially young girls, continue to face problems of every kind, and these problems mutate and as the social pressures increase every passing day. For example, uh, since the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdowns, it's been shown by empirical studies that the rate of dropouts, especially of girls, has, has increased. Child marriages also increased. Adolescent childbearing, gender-based violence, all these indices increased. The sharp drop in income for most families here in Nigeria and in most economies of the world would mean that families would have to make choices that almost always will disfavor the girl child. And of course, Female children have suffered disproportionately from the displacement of, uh, caused by the insurgency and conflict in the Northeast and, of course, in parts of the Northwest. 
Unemployment, of course, which has also taken a dive, especially since COVID-19, largely affects young people who make up the majority of the workforce. So the, for the federal government, the president has prioritized the solutions to these issues. And since 2015, we've ensured that government social and entrepreneurial programs have an affirmative component for women. So of the 2.4 million beneficiaries of our government enterprises and empowerment program, 1.2 million were women. That is 56.4% of beneficiaries were women. So a total of 38 billion in loans have been disbursed over the past four years. And of the 1.1 million beneficiaries of conditional cash transfers, 98% are women. Our youth employment uh, program also, NPAR, of the 526,000 employed, 40.4% are female. And of, of course, of our 1,674,000 uh, cooks in the homegrown feeding, school feeding program, 97% are females. We implemented a payroll support program, which was designed to mitigate income losses in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. And of the 307,173 employees that have benefited, 130,880, that's 43%, are female-owned businesses. So we've continued to emphasize female-owned businesses. We've continued to emphasize affirmative actions for females. Of, for instance, in our artisan scheme also, beneficiaries of the support program after COVID-19, 94,318 artisans, 40,000 of them, 40,386 are females. That's 41% of beneficiaries. And so it is also with our MSME uh, schemes as well. With respect to MSMEs, over 35% of all the MSME grants are females. And all of these are deliberate affirmative actions to ensure that females benefit proportionately and where they are not able to benefit proportionately, at least fairly in the distribution of these programs. And of course, there have been all sorts of other activities directed specifically uh, by the president to ensure that, these are, that we, women are given a fairer chance and a fairer opportunity. Child Rights Act, of course, we're all familiar with all that has been done with respect to the Child Rights Act and also the Violence Against Persons Act. All of these legislation are designed to address concerns that especially affect the girl child or women. We've also committed in word and deed to education to ensure that no child is denied access to free basic education. And I'm sure that many of us will recall uh, the president's statement on the, uh, on the 12th of June, 2019, when he said that it was criminal for any government to refuse to, ensure, to, uh, to refuse to ensure that all children of school age Attend, uh, attend school compulsorily. And he said that, of course, referring to the act, referring uh, to, the, to the laws on the matter, he said that he would ensure that those laws are enforced. And this has happened at the National Economic Council level, where with meetings with governors, we have put forward a dashboard to ensure that the president's directives are complied with, with respect to education of, of all children, and especially, of course, education of girls. So we believe that compulsory education, especially of girls, is game-changing in many respects. As has been shown that when uh, female children are educated, it will possibly, uh, positively impact the age of marriage. Even maternal and infant mortality will be affected. In 2020, the Federal Executive Council approved a World Bank credit facility in the sum of $500 million dollars to finance the Adolescent Girls Initiative for Learning and Empowerment. Now, this initiative was particularly important because it was meant to improve secondary education opportunities among girls in certain targeted states. And these states, which are the participating states, include Bono, Ekiti, Kaduna, Kano, Katsina, Kebi, and Plateau states. And the, pro the project was aimed at creating safe and ac accessible learning processes advancing an enabling environment for girls 
and strengthening the institutional capacity of the federal government and state governments to support girl-child education. The project targets girls between the ages of 10 to 19 years with a strong focus on disadvantaged adolescent girls from poor local government areas with low secondary school transition rates and girls from some of the poorest households. This intervention is projected to benefit 6.2 million girls and boys also. On the issue of safety uh, of, of children, especially in schools, in the wake of criminal abductions that we've seen lately, the president has constituted a committee to look specifically at safe schools, and especially to try and implement the Safe Schools Initiative. We have worked at, that, at the committee level now for the past uh, couple of months, and already uh, steps have been taken with uh, the security agencies to ensure that this is done in all of the schools with the support of our state governments. Since 2016, the rule of law advisory team they, they are in the presidency has taken a wide range of steps towards achieving a strong justice response in support of women and girls. We form strategic partnerships with stakeholders, local and international, including the European Union, uh, the rule of law and anti-corruption program of the EU, the Open Society Initiative uh, for West Africa, uh, the Cannes Foundation, the Ford Foundation, and all of them have made commitments and have proven, that have proven very valuable in supporting our efforts to succeed. So to ensure our efforts at uh, coordination, we've also set up uh, several responses to cases of uh, gender-based violence. Uh, the rule of law team supported the establishment of sexual and gender-based violence response teams across the country. So practically in every state of the country, the rule of law team has tried to establish at least one uh, uh, gender-based violence response team. In November 2019, in an effort to enhance access to justice, we secured a toll-free number and a short code for the FCT in particular, uh, for the SGV, uh, SGBV response team, with the general support of Airtel, the, the telco. We've also developed guidelines for gender-based violence response in Nigeria, and a national guide for the establishment of sexual assault referral centers in Nigeria to enhance further coordination. Also in the same 2019, the president directed the National Human Rights Commission to set up a special panel to investigate cases of unlawful arrests, uh, assault and sexual and gender-based violence in the federal capital territory involving complaints of raids of nightclubs and arrests of women by the police. The panel commenced sitting in the FCT and hearings have continued. Uh, they were truncated due to the pandemic in 2020, but we're told that they resumed sitting in April 2021 and are now to submit uh, their report. First, We've also had first responders, like the police and response teams. Now, these are central to all the efforts we're making to address gender-based violence. As a result, we are currently supporting the implementation of projects aimed at strengthening the capacity of the Nigeria Police Force and also the, F uh, the Federal Capital Territory Response Team. And they receive rec uh, uh, records and reports regularly especially uh, those concerning violence against women and girls. For young people, and um, I think that this is an, an important part of the work that has been done, especially by the federal government, the president has directed that our focus must be on creating opportunities for good paying jobs. And he said, you know, that one of the concerns that he has is that the jobs that young people have should be jobs that can sustain a family. And I think that's an important guide for the sorts of things that we then try to do, you know. Consequently, consequently, we've worked on all available local and international opportunities for creating these sorts of jobs that the president had in mind. For example, the AFDB, uh, there's an AFDB-led $500 million IDICE program. And this is a program that uh, the AFDB is coordinating 
to support the technology and creativity sector. So for young people in technology and creativity, the funds will be available to finance their ideas, the ideas of young innovators, and provide infrastructure such as shared facilities and skills training. You know, and now this, this, this is quite important because uh, the shared facilities are facilities that enable groups of uh, innovators to come together to use facilities that individuals may not be able to afford. So if it's equipment, we buy the equipment. The equipment will be, of course, equipment that one person may not be able to afford. But then all of those who are involved in that particular sector will be able to use it. And we've been able to demonstrate that shared facilities work. We've done shared facilities already. We have one in, 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 in Newi. We have one in Oyo State. We have one also, I believe, in Adamawa State. These are facilities that enable uh, young people who are innovators or who are working in a particular sector to share facilities that may otherwise be too expensive. Then there's a Jubilee Fellows Program. Uh, this is a joint initiative with the UNDP. This program will provide paid internships for 20,000 young Nigerian graduates for 12 months for the next five years. And this will, and this, now this program, this program will ensure that these 20,000 graduates annually will be attached to uh, private companies or public companies where they can learn and gain some hands-on experience. And the payment for uh, the program is made, will be made by the UNDP. And I must say that's a very handsome pay for uh, the 12-month uh, period. And after the 12-month period, of course, these young people can then uh, go out and do other things for themselves, either entrepreneurship or remain with the companies where they've worked. This is 20,000 young people every year for the next five years. So we expect that in 100, 100,000 young people will be trained and paid during the period of the training for the next five years. Then, then of course, uh, we have our Empire program, the federal government's Empire program. And this is part of Africa's biggest ever social investment program, where we've deployed uh, 500,000 young Nigerians, and they are paid as volunteers in education, in health, and agriculture. And this has worked. Uh, we started this in 2016. It's continued up until now. And in 2019, the president has now approved the increase of the number of NPAR beneficiaries from 500,000 to 1 million. So we expect to have a million young people. Then we have the Nigerian Youth Investment Fund, a 75 billion youth investment fund. This fund was passed unanimously by the Federal Executive Council to support the activities of young people. 25 billion naira annually invested in youth businesses for the next three years. So more than 5,000 today, more than 5,000 young Nigerians have benefited from this loan with a disbursement of over 1.5 billion naira. The CBN's Creative Sector Fund is also another fund. This is, a, this is what the CBN is providing, and this started also in 2019. It's introduced also to support the creative industry, and it's a financial in initiative so that the creative industry can access uh, long-term funds for entrepreneurship in this respect, and also information technology, those who are involved in information technology. So in addition to improving access to low cost and sustainable financing for job creation, the other objectives include the harnessing of the entrepreneurial potentials of young people within those industries. And what we've tried to do also with these young people is that we have ensured that they are part of policy formulation. So those in the technology sector, those in the creative sector, they are, part of, uh, they, are, they are part of the policy group. They, they, we have a creative and uh, technology sector policy group where they also contribute to making the policies, which is why uh, before now, a lot of the fintech companies, those doing you know, financial types of businesses, were running into trouble because they did not have banking licenses. But they were part of the formulation of the policy eventually which enable the central bank to grant special licenses to them so that they're able to do certain types of financial services without being banks. So you'll find today that there are many small companies that are giving loans, especially 
loans uh, using uh, algorithms uh, that just determine whether a person is credit worthy or is not credit worthy and all that. And they can just give these loans seamlessly. So all of these efforts are efforts that the federal government is making, especially for youth, uh, for, for youth empowerment. What you tend to find, and what we find each time, is that young people will say, well, we hear about all these things, but we don't have access to them. It's very difficult to access these loans. It's very difficult to access those facilities. Which is why, you know, we're at the moment working in consultation with several youth groups to see how uh, we can ensure that these facilities are made easier to access. So, for example, uh, if, uh, accessing credit in many cases involves putting forward some kind of collateral. Well, many young people don't have collateral. So we're looking at how to de-risk uh, credit. And we're working with the Central Bank, the Bank of Industry, and uh, the several other funding organizations, including the AFDB, to see how we can reduce the possibilities of collateral and, in many cases, be able to give uncollateralized uh, loans to, to young people. It's a huge, it's a, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge effort. But uh, it's a huge effort. But I must say that uh, the commitment of the federal government is, in no, is, is not in doubt at all. And at several, several different forums, the president has continued to emphasize that the future of this country depends on how well its young people succeed. And of course, the future of our country depends on how well we're able to take into account the problems of the 50% of, the, uh, of our population, of the female uh, population of our country. So again, I'd like to commend uh, the Future Assured and Her Excellency, the First Lady, for this incredible effort and to say that in the years to come, we, we hope and pray that Future Assured will do even greater and greater things. I think that uh, just as you assure the future for women, we men also are looking for some assurance that our future will be good. God bless you. Thank you very much.